surviving COVID-19, the virus, without a hospital, without respirator, is that possible? I don't know. But I'm going to give you a few advice, what could give you a fighting chance at least. 20% of those who get this virus, they need intensive care. Uh, and some of those, 5-10%, would need a respirator to survive, to help them breathe. So what happens if you don't have a respirator? I want to teach you some techniques that could help you fight back. I have suffered similar symptoms many times and I've developed a strategy and some techniques. Uh, in a worst case scenario, when you get this virus, you will get pneumonia. Liquid would enter your lungs and you will basically run the risk of drowning. Uh, your own breathing cannot really oxygenate uh, you and it doesn't get into the blood and you will actually suffocate slowly. Uh, your body will fight till the end and it will be very hard to breathe. You will tire out, tire out and it's called ARDS, uh, acute respiratory distress uh, syndrome something. And your body's in pain at the same time. Your immune system is burning you out. Uh, you will tire out and your oxygen levels will go lower and lower uh, in your blood and in your brain. And uh, what's my take on this? Well, I've been climbing mountains, high mountains. I've been weeks above 6,000 meters. I've been up to 7,000 meters. It's hard up there to oxygenate yourself uh, at those levels. You start breathing shallow, hard work. Your oxygen levels go down constantly, all the time, 90%, 80%. And the next step would be actually cell damage on those levels. I'm also, I've also been doing free diving, extreme free diving, world championship level, really extreme stuff, challenging my body. I, I fainted, become unconscious several times because of low oxygen. And I suffered secondary drowning, liquid in my lungs. It's sort of like pneumonia, ARDS. I had no hospital. Uh, I couldn't fully oxygenate myself. I lost consciousness several times. I survived. In free diving, I have damaged my lungs, uh, the alveolis. I've got liquid in my lungs several times, pulmonary edema. It's similar to pneumonia. And in, in that situation, if you even try to do anything hard work, even walk 50 meters, you could faint just of lack of oxygen. Uh, the, the, the lungs don't function. What did I do? Well, I will now tell you this and it could be helpful to you. Uh, first of all, you should seek professional help. You should get into intensive care. But if you can't, my advice is don't do anything. No lifting, no walking, no talking, nothing strenuous. Just lie down. But don't lie down fully, sort of half sitting up. Maybe raise your legs a bit, a bit like I'm sitting right now. And you don't want to eat any heavy food. You don't need that kind. You're not doing anything. You don't need much food. Just drink your nutrition. Focus with all your energy on, on fighting this disease. Take some medicine that will bring down the fever if you have it. But don't take any other medicine. You want to feel the symptoms. You want to feel where you are. You don't want to hide your symptoms. Keep warm, but make sure that you have fresh air to breathe for days. It's going to last for days. So there's humidity in your lungs and it shouldn't be that much humidity. You should get it out of there. You should ventilate that out, not hyperventilate, breathing too fast in any way, slower, deeper breathing. And don't drink too much because you don't want to hydrate too much. You want to keep your water levels in your body a bit low. So if you can, Get rid of any kind of foamy liquid that comes from your lungs and your trachea. Get it up. Spit it out. You might even, if you have the energy, have to stand up, fold over, lean forward. Get it out. You want to get that liquid out of your lungs. 
And now we're getting to the important part. You need to take control over your breathing. The function of your lungs is to bring in air into your lungs. And what you want is the oxygen in the air. And you want to press that oxygen through the membranes in the alveolis into the blood. That's where you need the oxygen, into the blood. That's, that's where it should be. In the lungs, it's not doing any good. But your lungs are not functioning. There is something in these alveolis. The, the oxygen is going into these small cavities and trying to go through the membranes there, but there's too much water. They don't function. You're, you're suffocating. You need to pressurize your lungs as well as trying to get the humidity out. So you need to open up those alveoli with the pressure, with very deep breathing fully filling your lungs, not your normal breathing. If you would, let's say, relax and sigh, ah, you're sort of letting out the air of your lungs. There's still a bit of air down there, but you're at a neutral level. There's no pressure in your lungs, but you need to be on the top level of your breathing, filling your lungs fully. Using your diaphragma, your breathing muscle there down in solar plexus and filling up the lungs. And then you hold your breath. And there's a lot of pressure in your lungs. And that is very good because now you're sort of pushing out. You're creating a higher oxygen saturation level in your lungs. And you're pushing out oxygen into your blood and you might always pop those alveoles, the cavities, the membranes there opens more access to oxygen. And you might have to do these for this for hours, days, focus on your breathing. Maybe someone has to check you while you're sleeping if you are actually going into unconsciousness or breathing too shallow, wake you up to do some of these exercises. This Deep, not faster, no hyperventilation. You don't need that much air, actually. You just need to pressurize the, the air. <sighs> breathe through your nose. The air is much better if you breathe it through your nose. I could explain, but take it for fact value. And this is the breathing I'm describing is a, sort of a modified yogic kind of breathing that, that some free freedivers do. And some of them, if they're injured, if they're smart, they do this. <sighs> And you might notice ah, that I'm blocking the outflow, the exhale, because I want to keep that overpressurization as long as possible. You could block with your lips, your tongue, your teeth, but if you can block with the epiglottis here, that's good. Nose in, deep. Hold your breath for some time. Ah. No hurry, just keep doing this. Get the oxygen into the blood. That's it. Good luck.